Welcome back to Spoilers, man. All right, my guest tonight, he used to work on other people's movies, and one day he said to himself, you know what would be better than this, man? Werewolves fighting vampires that don't sparkle. <laughs> Uh, he's directed the Underworld films, he directed Live Free or Die Hard, and he's the director of Total Recall, which is coming out uh, next week. But when he's home, he's just Beckinsdale's bitch, man. Give it up for the prettiest director in the world, Len Wiseman! <laughs> Thank you for that intro. That's Not at all, but that's, the thing is, I, used to being introduced? Yes, no. As the prettiest director <laughs> in the business? The, uh, these cats are used to seeing this director, and so there's a standard, and it's a substandard, and you step in the chair, they're like, that's what a director looks like? <laughs> um, I love uh, Len. He put me in a movie called Live For Your Die Hard, and it was fun to be in it and whatnot, but more than that, after we were done shooting, there was one day, two days, where I came and looped, and we just sat around and talking, and Len, is one of those true success stories in this business that makes your heart do somersaults, man, because they'll tell you, like, hey, if you start here, one day you can reach the top. Anybody can do this job. And he actually proved it. Tell them how you started. What movies were you working on in the beginning? Well, my first movie was a really low-budget thing that shot in San Francisco, where I grew up, mm -hmm. called The Quest of the Delta Knights. Okay. And I did what I had heard about. And when people say, just walk onto a set, grab an extension cord, grab a clipboard, do something and just look like you have some kind of, you know, some kind of job there and you'll pass right through security. And that's exactly what I did. But I remember, I was, because I, I grew up in San Francisco and there the only real, um, uh, you know, mark of the industry was Lucas. Right. You know, and having Lucas film up there. Because he's up there in Marin County. Yeah, and I, I had, there was a friend of mine who was, who was going to some seminar, a mm. sound seminar there. And so I came with him and I literally thought, this is my chance. Mm. I took my, <clears throat> the, the VHS reel that I had of low budget music videos or whatever I was doing, and I put them in the Ziplocs, and I thought, when we drive in the gate, I'm just gonna take these things, I had about 12 of them, and I just rolled down the window and just started chucking them out the window like a paper <laughs> route. And I just, I, you know, I had my, had my number and everything, if like, so at one point, I'm actually thinking at that time, when Lucas gets around to mowing his lawn, <laughs> he will pick this up, and he'll go, well, that's clever, that's right. clever. I'm you like, never got the Lucas never call from the baggie, did never, you? Like, never. I got one of the, like, you know, and got, yeah. There'd be a call from Lucasfilm going like, we know where you live, stop throwing tapes at us. Yeah. Yeah. I just had that, you know, it was like, I've got to do everything possible to, to try and, you know, to it try and It wasn't enough on. to just be in the movie business, like, which you already were, you'd already gotten a foot in the door, but you're like, now I want to do other things. I don't want to draw pictures for people, I want to do it myself. Yeah, it, and, I, and I'd been wanting to do that you know, since, since I was a kid. kid, and I had so many movies that I made, you know, horrible movies that I've made in my backyard and all that. So, but from what age were you running around with a camera? Because I remember hearing like when Spielberg was a kid, he'd run around with a Super 8, and by the time he was a man, boom, Jaws. So were you <laughs> running around and shooting movies from a young age, and, and essentially learning your craft, the 10,000 hours of practice kind of thing? Yeah, I was. Since I was, uh, the first movie that I put together, I was 11. So, Do you know what was I was doing when I was 11? <laughs> Masturbation. <laughs> I thought I was an early bloomer and I, I felt I like I, I was on to something. I didn't skip on any of that either. Um, but I Put would, that in baggies, did you? But see, I would, uh, yeah. <laughs> Throw it over to Lucas, be yeah. like, you'll love this. <laughs> All right, so when do you move up? When do you get a bigger job where suddenly you're like, hey man, I could give some people ideas or let them know that I got some vamp vampire werewolf things going around? I started music videos first for a little while. So I did some really low budget. Who'd you shoot for? Shot for like Static X, Megadeth, mm. uh, and Vogue. So I did that for a little while, and then um, it was I had a meeting at Dimension, and they were interested in doing a werewolf franchise. Okay. And so out of a struggle to find something new for a werewolf pitch, I came to what better opponent for than a werewolf a than a vampire to really you know. So that that's where that all came from. I went back, put it together, did a lot of drawings, a lot of artwork on it and pitched it back to them. They really didn't like it. Um, but it was enough developed to where my, you know, I got an agent. But it, who did you convince? They're like, hey man, I want to do this movie. And they're like, all right, why not you? It was uh, Lakeshore. But I was, you know, I was like 28 years old. I had never sh shot a movie before. And it was still, a, it was $18 million, which to me was like, holy Is that what the budget of that movie is? Yeah. Get out of here. Yeah. Mall rats, man, like cost $6 million. Your movie yeah, only cost $13 million more and you had vampires in it. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, it's, it's weird, because you, as you said, you're not a horror guy, and when you were a kid, you directed a Die Hard movie, so how poetic that one day they're like, hey man, you want to do the fourth Die Hard movie? And you got the one with the cool title. I did. Yeah. 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 How do you like the new title? Uh, what is it? It's A Good Day to Die. Hard. Hard. As long as they... As long as they yeah, yeah. They yeah. <laughs> they're yeah. going to need that last word. <laughs> well, it was weird. Like, we got on set, and when you get on set, one of the first things you do is a blocking rehearsal. And Len had very cool blocking to do, man, because he likes to move the cameras and whatnot. Like me, I'd be like, two guys sitting here, and they talk to each other. But Len's like, you come in here, this camera's going to do this, this is going to do this, we're going to find you here, get up, you spin into this shot. He was going through every shot. And me and, and Willis were standing there, and, and I'm just going, I'm trying to go, okay, here, 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 and remember everything he said. And Willis is going like, no, 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 I'm just going to play with a look. Getting, getting Bruce to do something he does not want to do yeah. uh, is, uh, is not a, a, a fun thing. You know, so that's uh, I've been there, brother. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of nervousness about how it was going to turn out, what it was going to be. And funnily enough, when he found out that I had made a Die Hard movie when I was 15, mm. it's like something clicked with, okay, you, were, you really are a fan, just a geek kid or whoever who's like now doing his version of it. Right. And, um, you know, that we found like a, a, a dialogue with that. So everything that I would ask for became branded and known as like, okay, you want me to do the, uh, you know, do the, the, the backyard version? All right, well, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, ta take us through Total Recall. How did it come into your life? It came through, um, Neil Moritz, the producer, mm -hmm. had it. I read it, I was, I, I was very um, uh, cautious about, about it. One, I didn't, I immediately didn't want to do, I'd just done Die Hard. Right. Hawaii Five-0. Right, so, oh, you know so you I mean? didn't want to be the guy where no. it's like, if you want the 80s, go yeah, to Len Wiseman. <laughs> you know? And I hadn't directed a Total Recall movie in, in high school, so I had nothing to kind of, you know, put that in. So it's one of those, you know, when you get a, get a script, I mean, you write, but it's, it's uh, you know, you're going through and you're actually going, I don't want to like this, I don't want to like this, I kind of like it, I kind of like it. Damn it, it's, 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 it's really good. The original script that I read, um, it pulled a lot from the source material, but as well from the, from the film. It took a lift and a little bit from the flick. A, a ton of its own that, you know, it doesn't go to Mars. Um, the whole flick doesn't go to no, Mars? No. Really? So nobody says, get your ass to Mars? Not at all. No. <laughs> and that's actually the thing that, that I was really intrigued by. And once it, because I, I read to a certain point, and then once there is no Mars, I found myself going, uh, sorry, going, oh, really, there's no Mars? And, and then it's going, well, now I don't know where we're going. Yeah, yeah. And that's a good thing. That's right. Yeah, you know? it's a surprise at you that know? point. And so, because it was, what I really loved about Total Recall was the recall idea, the idea which what's inherent in Philip K. Dick's story, which is just fantasy versus reality and right. the what if. At the end of the day, man, you put the movie camera down, you go home, you go home to Kate Beckinsdale. Beckinsale. Say it again? Beckinsale. What'd I say? Beckinsdale, as a lot of people do. I say the D, what is it, not say the D? It's an S. That's why she went for you and not me. That's why. <laughs> she said, she was like, look, I really like Kevin, it's the D. <laughs> She's like, it's, it's weird, D. I like a fat guy, but he can't say my <laughs> name. Uh, you go home. Uh, to Kate Beckinsale. Are you ever like, <laughs> are you ever like, put on the leather man and say, I am a death dealer? I have tried so many times. <laughs> I've tried so many times. What I like about her, she, she's cool, she curses, she's like a real dude. She's gorgeous oh, she as hell, but she's a real like guy kind no, of. No, I mean, but a lot of people don't, I mean, she's really sharp, very funny, yeah. and, uh, and a bit of a sailor, yeah. A sailor. Yeah. Like she farts out loud and stuff. She Have you work. ever heard Kate Beckinsale fart? <laughs> <laughs> Have I ever? Um, you do fantastic work. I'm so glad you got another one out and whatnot. Uh, and, and as always, I'm always, I can look at you talk forever because you're so damn pretty. Talented and pretty. It's not fair, man. Give it up for Len Wise. We'll be right back with a cartoon. Stick around.